Hello, my name is John Gasper. I'm an identity and access management consultant and architect with Unicon. I'm the lead engineer of the tier grouper image. And today I want to talk about deploying the tier grouper image using Docker Swarm. This is a four part video series. In the first video, we'll introduce what we're doing and talk about the environment setup that we're using. In the second video, we'll talk about provisioning the grouper database and set up using Docker secrets and Docker configs. In the third video, we'll deploy the various grouper components as Docker services. In the final video, we'll talk about things you can do to continue your progress in working with the tier grouper image. Internet 2's grouper is an enterprise access management system. It's comprised of a daemon that runs in the background, Grouper UI, which is the user interface, and Grouper Web Services. There's also a JDBC database that is needed as part of the Grouper system. Grouper tends to be a very good application to run on Docker. All of Grouper's components are generally stateless. Grouper components scale at different intervals. Uh, so the web components, both the UI and web services, generally have lower memory requirements than the grouper daemon. However, uh, with the grouper daemon needing more CPU, more horsepower, uh, and memory, um, we usually run one, or whereas web services and UI, we may end up running uh, several instances of those components. So as Docker Swarm is starting up new instances of our containers, it will look across the clustered VMs and decide where it can start that container without us having to go through and do the calculations of, oh, I've got four gigabytes here, I've got four gigabytes there. It will just make that happen. All of the grouper components are available as a single tier image. To quote Paul Kasky, the grouper tier image is like a chameleon. It's able to morph and take on all of the various grouper roles. So the tutorial goals are the following. We're going to create a Docker Swarm. We're going to create an organizational base image. We'll populate the grouper database. Then we're going to create custom images for each of the grouper components. This is in contrast with putting all of our role customizations into a single image, which is certainly doable as well. It just won't be demonstrated in this video. Uh, then we'll create Docker secrets and Docker configs to store our passwords and other uh, sensitive information, as well as store configurations that are environmentally specific. Finally, we will start each of the components as Docker Swarm services. For the rest of this session, we'll review the system environment being used by this tutorial. We'll pull down the sample project that has our working configuration that we will use to build and deploy our grouper environment. We'll install Docker Swarm. We'll start an image registry where we can push our local images to a central location. For this tutorial, we need an IDP and directory server. So we'll spin up a sample set of services that our grouper environment will point to. Finally, we'll build and push our organizational base image to our image registry. So in my environment, I've got a nice clean CentOS 7 install. The machine has four processors, uh, four to six gigs of RAM is gonna be good. Uh, if you want it to be really uh, snappy when you get it going, uh, six is probably better, but four will certainly uh, do what you need it to do. Uh, I've got a 64 gig hard drive on the VM, but in reality, I'll probably use no more than 10. And in my VM, this is running parallels on my Mac, I've got all the shared components turned off. If you're hosting this up in AWS or in your own VM where an infrastructure, you probably don't need to worry about that. And finally, my user account that I'm working with uh, has the ability to sudo, so I'm able to uh, run uh, commands as the administrator. On this new machine, I've got, uh, I've SSH'd in. I'm not gonna work through the, the direct console. Uh, and I've gone through and set up uh, DNS entries for grouperexample.edu and idp.example.edu that point to my virtual machine. In my case, I've just got a little Etsy uh, host file config that does it for me, but certainly you could uh, set up your own institutional DNS to point at your, your VM. 
Uh, I've got my VM tools installed. Uh, everything is uh, fully updated uh, with yum. And I've gone ahead and installed uh, Docker. The last thing I did was actually was install Git. And now I'm ready to move on. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull this uh, code and change the directory in. Great. So the first thing I need to do is I need to install the Docker Swarm. I've got Docker already running. Okay, perfect. Nothing's running, but I, I am connecting to the Docker engine. We need to promote this, if you will, to be a swarm manager. So let's go ahead and do that. The next thing we need to do, we're going to be building some images, our institutional images of the grouper uh, image. And we need a place to push those to, to store those so that our swarm nodes can pull them from that central location. So instead of typing that all out, I'm going to go ahead and paste that command. This will take a moment and uh, it'll download the uh, registry. Uh, this is just the bare bones native uh, kind of Docker registry that you can pull down. And if we now run that, we'll see that the container is up and running. Uh, if we want to confirm that uh, we can run this and we should get back a little JSON uh, entry here. Yep. So we currently have no repositories and if we had repositories, we could run an additional command and you know view uh, what images are part of that uh, repository. But at this point, we are getting a response back from our uh, registry. So we're ready to move on. The next thing that I'm going to do, and I'll kind of flip back and forth between tabs here, is I need a database to be provisioned. I need an LDAP directory, and I need some IDP uh, services. So I have kind of a pre-canned environment set up for me under the ancillary directory, and I've got a Docker stack. And basically a stack is just a set of related services that you can easily uh, bring up, bring down, manipulate. And so basically this is my definition for my environment. So I have an LDAP that has a bunch of sample data in it. I've got an IDP that is uh, set up and designed to be used with this um, LDAP. And that's what I'm going to demo with. You certainly can update all of the project files to point to your own LDAP and your own IDP. Uh, I would certainly encourage you to do that. Uh, the last thing is something you may want to reuse in your environment. Uh, you have the choice of how do you want to run the grouper database. In this example, I'm going to use it as a Docker uh, service. I'm going to run MariaDB. Now, for some folks, if you're just getting into this, and you're not used to running containers and things like that, I would encourage you to consider running your relational database as a standard service, uh, the, the normal, traditional, non-Docker way. Uh, the last thing we do have down here is that um, I will be using an internal, uh, like a software-defined network that's going to run in my Docker Swarm. Uh, it's I'm defining it. I'm just naming it internal. Um, and this internal network will be the default network that each of these different services are available on. We will see that uh, uh, in a little while, uh, you know, being applied. The last thing to look at before we jump in is when I go and actually populate my database, um, the, the grouper uh, database, I, there's a command that'll go out and do all the DDL uh, type of work for me. And I you know, basically just have to point it to um, the, uh, the database. So this ANC is actually short for, if you notice, the directory was uh, ancillary. Um, when I run my, uh, my um, Docker uh, stack deploy command, I'll actually give it a name. And that's where this ANC is going to come from. And then the image, this DB, actually happens to match up directly with uh, the service um, name in the last file that we looked at. And then the rest of this is kind of traditional kind of grouper things. And then I'm going to pass in a grouper uh, username and a password. Okay. 
So we'll go ahead and back up on that, come back here. So I'm going to change directory into that ancillary directory. I'm going to copy this so I don't make a bunch of typos in here. And basically, this is what's creating that software defined network for me. All right. So then we're going to execute that stack that we just looked at. And we'll go ahead and press enter there. It's going to create the DB. It's going to create the, uh, the LDAP. And it's going to create the IDP. Now those are going to take a few minutes to actually um, get fully running. And we can see those. The reason why it's going to take a few moments to, to finally get up and running, we see our replicas currently are a zero of one, zero of one, zero of one. It's because it has to download the Maria image, has to download the IDP image, has to download the 389DS uh, sample um, LDAP image. So we can kind of hit up and on here a couple of times. We're going to see it's going to take a few minutes. I am running on kind of a slow uh, network connection. Uh, but then once that has completed, um, I'll be uh, set to go ahead and start um, working on my base image. And there we go. We now have all of our uh, background services up and running. So I'm going to go back a directory. And we will drop into our base image. And let's go take a look at what is in that base image directory. So now with Grouper, we've got three major components. We've got the daemon, we've got the UI, and we've got web services. We probably have files that will be common across all three of those images and probably um, common across all of our different environments, or at least once we've promoted, they'll be common across those environments. Those may be uh, jar files that have additional grouper hooks, uh, our grouper functionality that um, we've uh, customized. Uh, they could be config files, could be images that we, you know, we're just gonna make it part of our base and, and bring it forward. It really doesn't matter. And in fact, if we look at this um, Docker file, the only thing we're gonna pull in is this grouper properties file. So this grouper property file is gonna be um, common across all of our uh, components. And if we look at that real quickly, we're gonna notice it's pretty bare bones. Uh, we're gonna have it auto create our system groups. Uh, we're defining that we are gonna use the wheel group and what that group's gonna be. And um, we're gonna allow include and exclude groups uh, to, be, to be used. So nothing too special there. So to build, we've already dropped into our base directory we are going to build this guy and what we're going to do is we're going to tag it so a tag is us giving an image a name and you'll notice that we've got something different if you've looked around docker this is the uh, the organization and then this is the image that we're pulling um, and then so we've tagged it so we can refer to this image by this full name this is the fully qualified name of this image you probably have never seen this whole local host and a port number on there. Well, that's because we're not going to be using an image that is in Docker Hub. We're going to uh, use an image that is back here. If we look up here at the top of the page, it's in our own local registry. So if I had done a full-blown registry install, or I was using some third-party registry other than Docker Hub, um, you know, I'd have a nice, clean, fully qualified name um, in there. So let's go ahead and we'll start this. This is also going to take a moment to pull down because this is the first time I'm referencing the tier uh, grouper image. The image download and build is now complete. We have tagged it with this fully uh, qualified name here. Uh, the next thing we need to do before we can really use it across our, um, our swarm is we need to push that up to the registry. And again, normally this would be some sort of central repository. So we're gonna push it up. So now what we're doing is we've taken the image changes that we've made that we put on top of the tier grouper image. And we are pushing each of the layers that we just downloaded of the tier grouper image. We push that up as well as our local customization. At this point, our repository has been populated with 
uh, that image and if we go up a couple commands here and run that curl we will see that we have an organ a repository organization slash grouper dash base now that we have the prerequisites out of the way and we've built and pushed our organizational base image we're ready to provision our grouper database and start managing our grouper secrets and our environment specific configurations join me in the next video as we continue moving forward